It has been several years since the first reveal of Symphonic Verses, produced by DSB Enix Digital Entertainment. Whilst the story has remained in the shadows for the duration of its time in the public eye, only revealing basic details about this fantasy saga's overall feel, the series creator and director, Jin Zhen, has stated that this story is contrasted with very realistic and dark tones set in this very stunning fantasy backdrop that creates the stage in which this world and its great tragedy unfolds. While we have yet to receive concrete updates as to the series' full story and its villains and how large the series is, there have been some details that help us to form an idea of what to expect. However, the basic synopsis has given fans the overall feeling of a tragic tale of love and redemption, and the full extent of what will be revealed in this dark and contemporary fable is unknown as of yet. Join us as we explore the fact, myth, and legends of this intriguing tale known as Symphonic Verses, Oblivium Sic Sempertanum. Based on the Fabula Crystallum Thronos, and the one who would sit upon the crystal throne and become the last king of Levi Samenos V. This dramatic series opens with a tale of celestial crystal swords of power that were handed down from the great celestial dragons of Eon. For years, the swords were used as instruments of war, fueling imperial nations who are vying for supremacy. The prolonged use of the swords held devastating results on those who wielded them, until the swords disappeared and were lost to time. Only three of the symphonic blades are left in the world. Two are already in the possession of one man, whilst the remaining kingdom seeks to gain the third, so to establish themselves as the last great and dominant power. On a historic day during the 800-year war, a peace treaty signing is set to take place between the Glass Kingdom and the Kingdom of Hanarum Idola. The modern city kingdom of Stella Fabula serves as the backdrop to our main protagonist, Adonis Niels Noctrinus, who is blissfully unaware of what tragedy is to come. Adonis and his master, Concerto Maestro, were to attend the treaty signing that night and its festivities. However, they were abruptly called away by the lords of their order with news of great importance and secrecy. Adonis is tasked with traveling to a forbidden kingdom on a deadly quest to retrieve a mask known as Hiramoth, unaware that these actions would set into motion a chain of events with a cataclysmic outcome. Adonis is a prince and imperial champion of a mafia-like kingdom known as the Imperial Argonise. They are the heir apparent rulers seated upon the modern throne of imperial lord Baron Vallis Gladiatorius Vercumio. They are the last of a venerated bloodline, divinely charged with protecting the last of pure blood nobility and the symphonic swords of Eon. Soon after, it becomes apparent that the treaty was a ruse by the noblemen of Cursorus Honorum. Swiftly, anarchy ensues, and a new power known as the Symphony Empire launches a full scale assault on the Glass Kingdom and its citizens. It is here we meet Frost Lacrime Valentia, princess of the Glass Kingdom and niece of its emperor, Dar Orinth Sanctus Divium Falconia Ali, who is the current protector of the sacred powers kept within the royal kingdom of Glass. With the fate of the royal family's sacred power and its king unknown, Frost escapes with her cousins, Theseus, who is the firstborn of the emperor and the future king, his sister, Ciatera, and their personal noblemen and protectors, Vise Leon and Tragume, as they try to escape and set themselves up in a defensive position. From celestial dragons and swords of power to gothic inspired metropolis cities, Symphonic Verses seeks to break the mold on fantasy convention.